We are here today to check out some more cricket. But should we just call it like Cricket Tuesday or something like that? <laughs> cricket Tuesday. Cricket Tuesday. Cricket Tuesday. It's so true though. Okay, well first so of all, true. Mitch Johnson, Brett Lee, MS Doney, with all that boring stuff out of the way, this is a very important <laughs> momentous occasion. All right, welcome back to Board Reviews. Nick here. Wait, Nick there, Gabe here. See, you threw me off. You threw me off. What's going on, brother? Not much, not much. If you guys are having a hard time trying to find me, I'm the weird looking one, and then you'll find me right away. We are here for another rendition of Cricket, Cricket Tuesday. Tuesday. And go. Nick, today we're talking about one of my kin, all right? One of my kin off my squad, legend. of course, the legend, Sir Viv Richards, okay? Being a West Indies fan, being from the Caribbean myself, this guy's a national treasure. And, uh, you know, Viv Richards, he's beloved in cricket, as you know. Um, unlike me, all right? Uh, uh, <laughs> wow. His, his college, bro, there's places I can't go. There's places I can't go. That's a self drive by? That's a self drive by, man. You know what I mean? There's places I can't go. Savannah's like, man, you better leave Jason Campbell. You know what I mean? You better leave John Campbell alone, I should say. Um, but with that being said, dude, uh, he's a beloved figure, right? We've heard him do commentary from time to time. Again, unlike me, intelligent commentary, <laughs> um, where I just ramble from time to time. But man, this guy played cricket, and I would say it was right there on the cusp of when the West Indies was a dominant and i mean a dominant force okay you know back in like the 70s we had the four horsemen right we saw the the the, the documentary on um, fire and babylon and um viv richards came right you know right towards the tail end of that he became the captain of the team i believe it was in 84 right captain of the test team in 1984 but uh, he had made his debut in, in, in 1975 and man this guy's numbers nick are so impressive but he's just a very likable human being, right? There's guys that played really, really well and are legends, but they're just not likable people. He's a likable person, bro. Absolutely. People will absolutely love him. One of the things that I've learned from cricket is how beloved Viv Richards is because his name gets brought up in so many different situations, and rightfully so. Just some information, Gabe, and I'm going to share with you about some highlights from his career. It said that, in two, 2002, December, he was chosen by Wisden as the greatest ODI batsman of all time. Now, I wonder if that's changed with Virat Kohli's ODI career, but still. As well as the third greatest test batsman of all time after Bradman and Sashin. He was voted as one of the five cricketers of the century by a 100-member panel in 2000. And he played the best ODI international innings of all time, according to Wisden Cricketers Almanac. He also um, became the first cricketer in ODI history to achieve to achieve 20 Man of the Match awards. Wow. I mean, he also had a career in, in test as well. In ODI, 6,700 runs, also 118 wickets. <laughs> and this guy is just, just unbelievable. He was in the Hall of Fame in 2009. He's still in the cricketing world doing different things. But uh, why don't you talk about 1976 a little bit, my friend? Well... First and foremost, 1975 is probably the most important uh, year because that's when he made his test debut, all right? Let's be real. That's where you gauge on. ODI is nice, but in the cricketing world, all right, ODI, T20s, they're nice accolades, but unless you have an established test career, you're not considered a great. I'm just being real. I'm just being real. Let me know in the comments how you feel about that. But the reality well, is that's what I've test. heard. Yeah. And he made his test debut in 1975, um, actually, in 1974, I should say, in India, uh, at Bangalore, he went in the second um, test of that series, Nick, 192, made an, uh, an unbeaten 192. That means not out, baby. You know what I mean? My man was a dog, an absolute dog. Um, in 1975, Richards helped the West Indies win the inaugural uh, Cricket World Cup, you right? which is another huge Absolutely. accolade for him. And then in 1976 was perhaps his best year. Nick, 1,700 test runs. 1,700 test, test runs at an average of 90. Whole oh lack, cousin. Whole oh lack, cousin. That's, that's disgusting. Right? right now, 
he Joe Man. Root's like, do you know Joe Root's in one of the best forms, right? One of the best forms. He's probably got five or six centuries in the last few uh, uh, test matches. Going back six months, Joe Root's probably one of the better, uh, best test players right now in the world. Just being honest, he's up there with uh, 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 um, some of the greats. My man had 11, Nick. 11. 11. In test. All right. In, oh, I'm sorry. Seven in that, centuries. In that year. Yeah. In that yeah, year. Yeah. Seven centuries and 11 seven test centuries matches. And 11, yeah. This guy is an absolute savage. He's an absolute savage. And one of the biggest things with uh, 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 Vid Richards is that he's an ambassador for the game. He's still today, like you said, he, he uh, um, he's a mentor for the game. He's also a, a, a spokesman, an ambassador, and man, it, it, it's sad that, that the West Indies right now, you know, isn't where we were back in the 70s and 80s, the prominence of these guys, you know what I mean, and where they took, and we're talking about all the back way from the Four Horsemen, Viv Richards, Brian Lara, but this is why West Indies fans are so um, unsatisfied currently, Nick, because this is the greatness we had. And now we just don't have that, bro. And it's just like, it drives you crazy. But this is a great, the greatness we had, man. And we're watching a video uh, 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 from Vidri Richards today, a tribute to him and some of his best innings. Again, the guy was an unbelievable batsman. Um, man, I'm ready to jump into this thing right now. Nick? Yeah, let's go ahead and check this out. And I'm curious, because Gabe brought it for a second. Let us know what you think is the biggest issue with uh, the West Indies test not being dominant like it was before. Obviously, they don't have the four horsemen, but it's got to be more than that. We're checking out this video from Rumble Into 2. Like he said, Viv Richards versus Jeff Thompson. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for joining us here today. And let's see two of the great, the best ever, go over, um, go after each other. As the video says, sheer carnage. And we'll start this off in three, two, one. And Nick, I just looked at the title. This is that 1983 World Cup that yeah, we mentioned. This is where India was able to win it out. This is during the, the tournament here. Get it out of there. Like ESPN Classic. I love it. Look how that the ground goes up right there. That's crazy. A little ramp. The grass. Oh, he came up on the crease on him. Get that garbage out of here. Is that where Pont got it from? <laughs> A little spinning action here from Hogan. And again. Dude, those are some long boundaries, my friend. Down to one of the long boundaries, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Even Richards middled at six and four. Bro, he's so calm up there. Oh man. Notice what he doesn't have on his melon. What does he not have? Uh, a helmet. Yeah, no helmet. A helmet. Now I know it's a spinner, but still. From the other end. He does seem very patient, even with the pacer out there. Dude, look at how people were actually over the boundaries, man. They they do not allow that these days. Well, I think that might have been some of the workers out there. So I thought the same thing, but then look at they had like a little lanyard or something. Here's Thompson. His crazy delivery there. I think it's a little crazy. Oh, wasn't a bad ball by any means. Never half volley or anything like it. Jeff Thompson obviously has got some serious pace. Very good delivery. Good length ball and Viv Richards just pushing his front foot down the wicket. Yeah, he Hitting crossed through. over there to get that ball. Still his head is. Eyes on the ball. Nice easy stroke. Chapel. Ah. And there it is. Oh, that's a big boy. Oh that. <laughs> oh that. I wonder if that was Ian Chappell or Greg Chappell. I don't know which one was the bowler. Maybe they both were. But that's gone. doesn't matter who it was. People would change places with the Australian captain now. I mean, tactically. They can't get him out. 
Oh. Ooh. Now that was like that was like off of his back foot. Like his back foot was not planted on the ground. He did that. Nah, bro. Those so are fans. Right. Those fans are right there. They're on the field. I was gonna say they're on. And I think that was a no ball, bro. <laughs> Look at the back of his foot. Nice. That was the captain right there. Got the bucket hat on, stylish bucket hat. You know it. I gotta say, nobody wears a bucket hat like Stuart Broad. <laughs> You're out of control. Just say it. Ooh. Got it now. That's over the top. Safe play for four runs for Clive Lloyd. Richards fairly scampering through. He's missed the crowd. He's already up the oh. Oh, 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 yeah, they were trying to take the stumps away from the oh. umpire. He was so close. That's why we no longer allow fans on fields, bro. Oh, he was so close. He slid in there. Yeah, that umpire was tough. He said, I'm not giving up these stumps. Wow. Impressive, wow. Nick. Some I want to know your thoughts there. first because this, this, these are these are your guys, right? Now. I man, your impressive, man. First. Some quick hands there, and the thing that about him is he's he's calm. You know what I mean? And I think that what that's one of the things you need in tests. You need to just be settled. A lot of times when you're too anxious, you know, you 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 end up giving away your wicket or whatnot. And at no time did he look like he was anxious. Did he look like the oh. the, the moment got to him? Um, easy power too, bro. Easy power, like. Not universe boss powers. I've seen the universe ball, the universe boss. I've seen him literally miss hit a ball, Nick, and still put it out. You know what I mean? Thing goes like 100 meters, you know what I mean? 90 meters, gone. Like, but easy power where you see that even when he hits some of those sixes, it's not like he's overexerting them and stuff. He's not over swinging, you know what I mean? Where it, 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 it's a very fluid swing, very easy swing. And to me, I always, uh, uh, that's one of the reasons I like Sky. He's got one of the easiest swing. And I'm, we're talking about uh, uh, Sky for India. Um, one of the easiest swing. Like, watch his cover drive, man. It's a thing of beauty. And it's just a flick of the wrist. And he hit one of those sixes. And it was literally, oh, you're going to give it to me? Thank you. I'm not running up on the crease on you or anything. It was just like a boom, flick of the wrist, gone. And, and, and that's when a guy is dangerous, when they could do that. You know what I mean? Um, man, it's, it's honestly... It's a beautiful thing to watch, but it makes me yearn for the West Indies to get back to those days. It really oh, does, man. bro. It really does. And I mean, we that's what we have. We got guys now that can bang the ball, you know, 120 meters, but they can't be out there for 20 overs. They can't be out there for 30 overs. They're not going to see, you know, 150 balls or 200 balls or whatever. And, and that's the thing, man. In test, you've got to have that, 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 that calm demeanor where I'm going to be out here all day, cousin. All right? I'm going to be out here. And I'm gonna pick and choose my shots, and and man, it's 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 a mentality. You can't tell me that the guys now don't have the physical attributes to play. I mean, arguably, this is this generation of athletes are one of the best. Have you seen some of these guys, bro? They're chiseled, bro. They're Adonises, but they just don't have that mentality. Yeah, I mean, I gotta correct myself. I said that Ian or Greg Chapel. That was Trevor Chapel, I think, was his name. So many different chapels. Holy cow! So, for my first question, is this World Cup, they gave him 60 overs. We know it's 50 overs right now. I wonder if that's like a World Cup thing, if that was a World Cup thing in the 1980s. I'm not sure. Let us know why it was 60 overs. You had Viv Richards that got to 95 um, before they chased. And what we saw them, what we saw there was them chasing still with uh, about two overs and one ball left to go. So, they were able to chase. They were able to win that match. And like you said, he was so easygoing. With his, I mean, that's a few seconds of his career that we got to see there. But it doesn't matter who the bowlers were there coming at him. So easy going. He was able to move left to right or up and down right there at the crease. He was able to follow that ball and just go with it. And it was absolutely, absolutely a thing of beauty. And in that, I think that was uh, West Indies versus India. India won that final. But West Indies went to three finals in a row, won the first two of them. And you can see reasons on how that happened. With these kind of players, these kind of guys, you have the bowlers, you have the batsmen. And Viv Richards, I wish that he'd be playing right now so we can watch him live, so we can understand him a little more. 
but we want to do a video on him because we haven't done one yet. And this guy deserves is one of the legends, true legends, maybe top five batsmen of all time, maybe top three. Let us know what you think deserves to have a Cricket Tuesday. And I just I want to know from you all, what do you know about him that we haven't mentioned? What are some of the favorite things about him, his batting style? He got some wickets too, but uh, let us know what your thoughts are on the great Sir Viv Richards. Yeah, for sure, man. And I think that uh, as I'm thinking about this video, right, and thinking about the mentality, it's – it's you asked a question earlier. Maybe you guys can, um, you know, uh, uh, chime in in the comments, right? What's wrong with the West Indies now? Uh, very simple, all right? Money. The West Indies players have adapted their game to play in these domestic leagues because they just pay. That's the bottom line, whether it's the CPA, uh, CPL, the Big Bash League, uh, the IPL, the granddaddy of them all, they pay. So they really focus on that limited format because that's what gets them paid. And uh, people got to eat. I get that. People got to eat. Now, if the West Indies Cricket Board and were to put more money into the facilities and more money into their athletes or whatever, you'd have more guys um, concentrating, right, Nick? on that specific sport. But right now, the money's not there. So as a player who think about it, this happens with most families, right? If you're a professional athlete, your parents, your family have supported you a lot. They put a lot into it. You got a lot of people to take care of. You know what I'm saying, dude? And you have a lot of people you're responsible to, you're beholding to. So am I beholding to my family who has sacrificed blood, sweat, and tears, spent money on cricket equipment, on teams, on travel, on all this to get me to the, to the point where I'm a professional cricketer and now I can start earning to pay them back? Or am I going to play for my country even though it's a more of a pride thing? It, that's not feeding mouths. You know what I'm saying? That's not feeding the 15, 20, 30 people I'm beholden to. So let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm completely wrong, but I feel like that's a, a, a big part of it. And we see that in American sports all the time. You know what I'm saying? Certain sports have really gotten hurt in popularity because athletes can make more money playing other things. For example, I was watching an ESPN um, uh, documentary a few, year, a few years ago about how the American heavyweight has died, right? And it was like, where's the you know, next great American heavyweight? He's in the NFL, all right? He, that's just real. All right. NFL, you could come out of college and make 10, 15, 20 million dollars. All right. As a fighter, as a boxer, you may never get that kind of money in your career. All right. But could you imagine some of these NFL monsters we got, some of the specimens that we have, if they were, you know, were to train in boxing and be just full blown fighters? You know what I'm saying? It's just an easier path, a career, easier road, or easier career to get to be a, a professional athlete in the NFL or in a NBA or whatever. Think about LeBron James, daddy, 6'7", yoked. The guy looks like a linebacker, you know what I mean? He could do damage if he would train um, as a professional fighter. And that's where the, the – that, where are the great American heavyweights? They're in the NFL and the NBA, cousin. That's just real. So I, I understand that mentality. Probably also the UFC as well. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Right? Uh, boxing's dying as a sport. I'm sorry. But we, uh, we appreciate you watching this. Thank you so much for checking us out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time. That six runs.